Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting things. So the first one is Chris Bumstead, who just posted this photo, basically of himself in his, I guess, rebound after the show, and with a very interesting caption that goes, when you don't have to make weight, with a thinking emoji. And we're all thinking the same thing, Chris Bumstead in the open division. Is that gonna happen? Well, I really hope that Seabum is not going to become the new Kai Green, teasing a comeback every year or teasing uh, switching to the Open. I mean, he did retire, but somebody in the comments said that when he retired in his speech, he said he's retiring from the classic stage. He didn't say anything about Open bodybuilding. Now, if he doesn't do it right now, I don't think he's ever gonna do it. I mean, he got ready for the Mr. Olympia, he was peeled, he was shredded, he is still in great shape, he's just eating more, he filled out, he's definitely, obviously, much bigger, I mean, take a look at his arms, they have never been this full, his shoulders as well, his legs too, everything is just looking bigger, rounder, fuller, it could be just the lighting as well, but I think he does look fuller and bigger, but since he did retire, I don't see him getting in this kind of shape anytime soon, really, because you guys know that he has that, uh, that health issue with his kidneys, so he can be like pushing the gear uh, in the offseason and try to grow, he's probably just gonna go back to what he always done in the offseason, just cruise, train hard, eat right, and you know, remain uh, relatively small, I mean, for his size on stage, he is very small in the offseason, I mean, when he starts prepping, he actually gets even bigger and much, much leaner, which means that he's probably on very, very low doses in the offseason and he cranks it up for the prep, so if he doesn't do it right now, post-Olympia, he's never gonna do it. Which shows are next? Well, we got Prague Pro in a couple of weeks, like three weeks, I think, and then we have Romania as well, I think that's sooner, I think that's in like two weeks. There could be another European show, I'm not sure right now, but there are a couple of shows post-Olympia and I'm sure he can choose one of them and jump in and compete. Now, Martin Fitzwater is doing the Prague Pro, so he can't win that show, that's for sure. In Romania, he would have to face a Horse MD. Now, how good is Chris Bumstead actually? How good would he be in the Open right now? Not if he did an off-season and gained 20 pounds of muscle. That's a different conversation. The way he is right now, if he just did a different peak week without worrying about his weight, as he says, with just, you know, trying to get a little bit fuller, maybe lose some of the details, but show up blasting full, maybe a little bit bigger because of this rebound, maybe he actually gained some muscle, maybe he was really holding back with the food, and probably, maybe doing a lot more cardio, and once he stops doing that, his body may bounce back, and he may get bigger without really sacrificing much of condition, and then just do a peak week that is designed for an open bodybuilder. If he did that, how good would he be? Well, in my opinion, I think he could win a weaker pro show. Do I think he's a top 10 at the Mr. Olympia? Well, Rafael Brandau placed 8 at the Mr. Olympia. Do you guys think it's impossible for Chris to beat somebody like Rafael Brandau? A full, blasting full, let's say 15 pounds heavier, Chris Bumstead? Whew, I don't know. I think I would have to see him compare to those guys, but I think there is a big possibility that Chris Bumstead could be a top 10 Olympian in the Open, if not top 10, I'm pretty sure he could be like top 15, I think he could qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning one of the smaller shows, so maybe, it's, it's not very likely, but maybe he might jump in and do an Open show just for fun, how amazing would that be? I don't think there is anything bad that could come out of that, and imagine if he wins, if he wins a pro show, he would be like the first classic guy that, you know, went from classic to open in two weeks and won a pro show, an open pro show. How crazy would that be? It's, it's risky, sure, if he loses, if he places like fifth, then, you know, it's not a very good look. It's a risky move, but if he did that, if he pulled that out, that would cement him as one of the best bodybuilders of all time, I mean, basically. Not just a classic guy, but like a very good bodybuilder too. So if I was him, I would jump on that opportunity, man, but I don't know if he's gonna do it. He's probably just teasing us. The chances are like 99% that he is not gonna do it, unfortunately. He's just showing us what he looks like uh, in, the, in the rebound period after the, after the show. 
without worrying about weight. And it actually does look impressive. And I think he would do really well in the open. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. Alright, the next thing we gotta talk about, once again, probably for the last time, is Matt Jensen, who issued a statement about this whole chaos that happened with him, him basically retiring from coaching, and basically, in this statement, to sum it up, I am not gonna read the whole thing, but basically what he says is, um, his passion for bodybuilding shifted, it went more towards the, the endurance sports, he's focused on his family and on his business, and he just wasn't uh, as devoted to his athletes uh, this year. So why did he still coach them then? Well, he says he didn't want to abandon his, uh, his team, his clients, and to show that he's above them, and so he continued to honor his commitments. So the questions that I want to ask Matt is basically, is that the real reason, him losing passion and focus, or was it that Quinton Arias' gear was fake? What about Nick Walker? Was his gear fake too, or is he just uh, losing passion for bodybuilding and he wasn't devoted? What about Sean Clarita? Matt's statement after the pre-judging of the Mr. Olympia was that they delivered exactly what the judges wanted. Did he deliver exactly what the judges wanted, or was he just not focused on, on bodybuilding and on uh, his guys and uh, he failed to prep uh, Sean Clarita right? Which one is it? Were you lying then, or are you lying now? I mean, we all know what it is. He did lose passion. He did lose focus. That is the real truth, and now he's finally admitting it. And he still prepped those guys, and he still gaslit them, like, uh, with, uh, especially with uh, Quinton Raya, and I guess Nick Walker as well. His ego didn't want to let him admit that at the time, but now he's admitting it all and accepting it. Now, by doing this, by honoring his commitments... He cost Quinton Raya basically a whole year. He was super focused on growing in the offseason. He couldn't sleep, he couldn't breathe basically because of how heavy he was. And he was just a robot, as he says. He was just focused on bodybuilding the entire year. He skipped the shows for a whole year. And then he you know, showed up looking worse than two years ago. He lost all the muscle, he lost all the money he invested, he lost all the time that he could have uh, utilized much more efficiently. He, he lost a year of his career because Matt was just not passionate for bodybuilding and he didn't want to say that, he didn't want to admit, he just wanted to still get this guy's money and try to stay a coach, a relevant coach, even without really working with his guys. He cost Nick Walker... A Mr. Olympia placing. In my opinion, if Nick Walker was at his best, if he had a real coach, a good coach, somebody who was really devoted, and if Nick brought his best, he would potentially end up all the way as high as second, in my opinion. You know, Hardy was off, Derek was off, he already beat Martin at the New York Pro when Nick was very much off as well. I don't see Nick uh, beating Samson Dauda, however, but I think he could have placed as high as second. And Matt basically prevented him from doing that by not telling him to go to a different coach, by not admitting that he just can't do this job anymore. Nick lost a whole year of his career, and a year where he could have placed very, very well, because the top three guys, two of them were off. As far as Sean Clarita, he couldn't have placed first anyways, and he didn't place lower than second, so I guess... That wasn't as big of a disaster, I guess, because of luck. Basically, nobody else was good enough to push Sean, even if Sean was not at his best, uh, but he could have just looked better next to Keon. Look, guys, Matt Jensen, he was a great coach. I mean, he was one of the best guys in the world at some point. I don't know how knowledgeable he actually is. I mean, I listened to him on different podcasts, and I thought he knows his stuff. So I don't think he was a horrible coach since always. I don't think he was just lucky... I think he was a very good coach uh, before uh, this year, when he, as he says, lost the passion for bodybuilding. And the only thing that I have to say is that he should have stopped coaching as soon as he realized that he can't do this at 100%, but it is what it is, things went down the way they went down. As far as I know, all these guys are great with him, except for Quinton Raya, of course, but uh, the other guys, I think they're all good. So I guess they forgave him, and that's what's important, but if you ask me, what he did was definitely not the right thing to do. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. 
All right, and lastly, we got something that was basically said a couple of days ago, and I wanted to make a video about it, but I kind of forgot, and I wanted to include it in this video now. Basically, Michael the Bull left a comment about Ramon Dino and his problem with uh, sweating. So what Michael the Bull says is, I'm sorry, but this is a diet and peaking issue. It used to happen to me when I ate uh, sugar before stage, and I saw Ramon always warming up with a donut in his hands. I love Dino and I want him to look at his best, but sweating is definitely a big problem on stage. What do I think about this? Well, if you are carb loading for the stage during your peak week, it's okay to eat sugar, to eat junk food even, if it is a day before, two days before, but doing it on a day of the stage... And right before the stage, as Michael says, he's pumping up with a donut in his hand. That's, that's definitely not a smart thing to do. Because what can happen is your blood sugar can spike up and then go down. When that happens, when you go hypo, you can start sweating uncontrollably. I'm sure it happened to you if you're bodybuilders. I'm sure you went hypo at some point. But this can definitely happen even if you're not using insulin. And who knows if uh, Dino is actually doing that. Maybe he's actually shooting insulin backstage and carving up like the moments before the stage. But even if he's not doing it, you can still, you can still go hypo without endogenous insulin. So that could be a very good explanation. Finally, somebody gave us something. You know, we all thought, uh, like, it could be Chris Asito who is prepping him a wrong way, maybe he's holding a lot of water, but I thought he was always very dry before he started posing. There were some other theories about this as well, but this is the first one that actually makes a lot of sense. If that's the case with Ramon Dino, I never really saw him backstage pumping with a donut in his hand, not even on a video, but if Michael the Bull is saying this, he wouldn't be lying. And this is a very, very reasonable explanation. So guys, tell me what do you think about this down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.